This is a story about a living legend. A legend that dates back to the Indus Valley Civilization. A legend that has captured the world's imagination and a legend that grows more dynamic with each passing day. Presenting India's most iconic garment, the handcrafted Indian sari. The Indian sari's first international debut was in the 1950s when Valentino created the sari dress. Ever since, the sari has ruled the international red carpet and even made little appearances in Hollywood films. And the best thing is, you could just shorten it and wear it again. That is definitely so true. Back in India, Bollywood chronicled the changing face of the Indian sari with simple handcrafted cottons back in the 60s, giving way to shimmering sequins, heavy duty embroidery, and of course, the eternal song and dance attire the sensuous sari. But what is it that makes this unstitched garment so popular with style icons? Let's ask its true ambassadors who've always preferred the sari to the famous little black dress. Sari for me has obviously been a, a favorite choice in terms of um, whenever I was asked about the most elegant uh, formal wear. Uh, I'm, I've always been partial to it. It's the one garment that does complete justice to the woman's body. It celebrates the woman's body, accentuates her curves. And um, it has that nice tease element, you know, where it covers the right amount and shows the right amount. <laughs> Every region, therefore, brings forward a trunk full of saris. Each with a formidable identity and a strong socio-cultural influence. Not only region, but in some places, even from village to village, uh, there's a different weave, there's a different sari. And I think that that's what's very interesting. And yes, it's a visiting card, but it's also a history book. Because each sari tells you about that region, about the community that made it, even about the sort of the geography of the place. The art of kantha stitching, for example, has been kept alive for centuries by the women of West Bengal. Using a needle and thread, these women narrate their dreams and desires in a kantha sari. The kantha sari is a more recent phenomenon. In earlier times, precious silk and muslin and even pieces of old saris would be patched and stitched together as quilts. And because this was done at leisure, these women express their emotions through the running stitches. Banaras is often called the oldest living city in the world. A symbol of the Hindu Renaissance and a melting pot of Indian civilization. It is the Aryans that get credit for introducing brocade weaving to Banaras. At that time, real gold and silver threads were used to make brocade, which was worn exclusively by royalty. Brocades of Banaras started off more as patkas, which the men used to wear as scarves, or the ladies used to wear as sort of ordnies, or for their, their lehengas and skirts. But it was always there, and you know, when a place becomes famous for something, their migrants come, so they were migrant weavers who came from Gujarat, they were even weavers who came from China, they were weavers who came from South India, and it became a very living place. The silk sari tradition of Kanchipuram, the temple town of Tamil Nadu, goes back to the 3rd century BC when the Pallava dynasty started ruling the territory. The handcrafted tradition is based on strong contrast colours with stark golden integrated weaves known as Zari.
in most households here, weaving is a family enterprise, a skill and technique handed down from one generation to another. There are two small rivers flowing at the outskirts of Kanjipuram. One river by name Palar, other river by name Vehavadi. From those days onwards till today, we use only those river water for bleaching and colouring the silk thread. The water gives shining to the silk thread. Interestingly, the garment that goes back to the Indus Valley civilization still has the ability to reinvent itself. Many Indian and international designers have given the sari a modern twist. Today, trouser saris, saris with belts and jackets are probably a more practical answer for the contemporary woman. As is the Chotu sari designed by Sabya Sachi Mukherjee. In, for research of costumes for a Bollywood film called Ravan, it stars Aishwarya Rai. And, uh, we, uh, you know, I had to dress her up uh, as a woman who was trapped in a tribal village and as I went I saw that you know a lot of them had simple you know almost simple geometrical saris in very small lengths primarily because I think it was easier for them to move around the forest and I decided that you know why not crop the length of the saris because that would be a radical change and it would also you know one of the big complaints that I felt I've heard about the sari is that a lot of people say that you know you can't really run up and catch a bus in a sari but in a chotu sari you can actually wear a pair of sneakers and you can so whether it's a traditional or an in-your-face modern avatar the sari never fails We have changed from a 9 yard sari to a 6 yard sari. Today we are wearing a 2.5 yard comb. You know, the whole Indian look of you know wearing a necklace, wearing bangles, wearing um, um, you know, earrings and a sari is just spectacular always. The sari is the only garment that celebrates you the way you are. You can refashion it to your own needs. Sari is much more than a bit of fashion. It's something which actually held society together and led to so much of the cultural and aesthetic development of this country. And perhaps for many more centuries to come.